Hello everybody. Welcome to my webinar. My name is Catania David and I am application engineer in the Raman laboratory from Windows Desk Farm. Today my webinar will be focused on the surface enhanced Rama scattering theory. As you may know, more and more search analysis tools are requested on the market at the moment. So it is very important for the people involved to understand the basics of this technique. This is the overview of the webinar. After a short introduction, I will present the basic principles concerning the surface enhanced theory. Then we will see how source can be used in application. So why source? The source technique becomes interesting when the classical Raman spectroscopy fails. More precisely, when the Raman efficiency of the molecule is too low or when the quantities and the volumes are too small. What is source actually? The source effect is the enhancement of the Raman scattering coming from molecules. And for this, the molecules need to be located near nanostructured metallic surfaces that are excited by visible light. This is a simple definition of the source effect. Based on the strong signal enhancement, search technique has become a commonly used analytical tool. And this tool has two important characteristics. First, it is a sensitive tool because low concentrations, even traces, can be analyzed. And secondly, it is a specific tool because the molecules can be identified directly from their spectral fingerprint. These performances are requested today in chemistry and in biology, especially for the sensing application. For example, there are chemical sensors for the detection of traces of polluants and contaminants in food and water. And also, <coughs> there are biological sensors or biosensors for the detection of biomarkers which are key molecules in cancer diagnosis. But keep in mind that the search is a vibrational technique but and be careful the resulting search spectra of a molecule may not be the same with its classical Rama spectrum. And why is that? Because the enhancement will be maximum for the vibrations coming from the closest bone to the metal. There are three important factors that can influence the source results. The first factor concerns the source substrate. The source substrates are nanoparticles, often noble metals, gold or silver, and these nanoparticles can be immobilized on a glass substrate, for example, and this will be a dried substrate, or it may be in solution, and this will be a colloidal suspension. We will see in the following that the enhancement effect will depend on the geometry of this nanoparticle. The second factor concerns the molecule to be detected or identified. The user should have at least a basic review of the nature and structure of the target molecule before applying first. The third factor concerns the instrumental conditions. A Raman spectrometer will be used in all search measurements. The choice of the wavelength plays an important role in the enhancement process. These three factors need to be correctly managed if we want to have good search results. And for that, we should have a good comprehension of the effect. Let's see some basic principles of the source effect. The source effect, or mechanism, is not completely understood. There are two effects involved in this mechanism. One of them is the electromagnetic effect. Its contribution is to the overall enhancement of the scattering Raman signal is huge, approximately 10 to power 10. The other effect is the chemical effect and its contribution is smaller, up to 10 power to 2. These two mechanisms contribute simultaneously to the overall enhancement. In the following, I will focus on 
the electromagnetic effect, which is more important for the search process. The origin of the source effect is closely related to the optical properties of the source substrate. And the main optical property of the substrate is the LSPR, which means Localized Surface Plasma Resonance. What is the LSPR in few words? When the nanoparticles of the surface substrate are excited by visible light, they will absorb energy. This energy enables the collective electron oscillations inside the nanoparticle. We can roughly say that there is a wave which is formed and which has the same frequency as the incident light. This is the LSPR effect and it is involved in the enhancement of the electromagnetic field around the nanoparticle. The LSPR can be observed by measuring an extinction spectrum. This spectrum looks like in the figure. It is characterized by a maximum, which is related to the maximum enhancement, and which strongly depends on the nanoparticle nature and geometry, as well as on the excitation. Here is an example which emphasizes the close relation between the LSPR and the nanoparticle geometry. Search substrates which contain oblate gold nanoparticles with different sizes were analyzed. By measuring the extinction spectra for each oblate type, it was observed that the LSPR, the maximum of the curve, is different. We can see that in the in image at the, on the left part of the slide. In the right part of the slide, we see a graph which show us the evolution of the LSPR position as a function of the oblate size. As the particle size increases, the LSPR position is shifted in the near infrared range. These result, results prove that the LSPR can be tuned on the world visible range. Of course, there are source substrates having different geometries. For example, metal iron films, nanospheres, triangles, cylinders, and several fabrications methods have been developed in order to obtain uniform search substrate. Same size, same shape, same interparticle spacing. And why uniform search substrate are needed? Because in this way, the enhancement will be uniform and the search signal will be reproducible. The distribution of the enhancement field will follow the nanoparticle, nanoparticle geometry, as we can see in this figure. For the triangles or ellipsoid or diners of spheres, we can have different concentration of the enhancement field around this nanoparticle. In this slide, I would like to explain the search process step by step. In the first step, we have the metallic nanoparticle. When this metallic nanoparticle will be excited by an incident field, a local field will be created around it. This local field will be proportional with the incident excitation or the incident field. Actually, these two steps summarize that I ex what I explained previously. But what will happen when the molecule will be in the contact with this nanoparticle. So, the molecule arrives at the vicinity of the nanoparticle. The local field created around the nanoparticle will polarize the molecule and the Raman scattering will occur. This scattered field, which is the Raman signal, will interact with the nanoparticle and a new field will be created. This field will be huge as compared to the scattered one and it is actually the strong Raman enhancement. In this more physical approach of the search process, you can observe that the huge enhancement strongly depends on the incident excitation and the observed Raman scattering. Once the enhancement created, we are able to speak about the search intensity. And don't forget the search signal comes from the molecule. 
In the next example, we will see the relation between the enhancement and the cell's intensity in the presence of a molecule. This example concerns the cell detection of a protein called ribbon plate A. The cell's substrate used are different nanocylinders patterns. Each pattern contains nanocylinders with different diameters or sizes, from 100 nanometer to 180 nanometer. A drop of the protein solution is absorbed on the substrate. Two types of measurements were performed. The cell's measurements, and only one random band of the protein was analyzed, and the LSTR measurements, where the extinction spectra were measured for each pattern. The excitation wavelength was 633 nanometers. Now let's see the results. How do the search measure, what do the search measurements show us? The maximum search intensity was obtained from the pattern containing nanocylinders with 100 nanometer diameter. And what about the LSPR measurements? What do they show us? Let's remember the extinction spectrum shape. The maximum search intensity is obtained for the maximum LSPR position around 650 nanometer. The, this LSPR position corresponds to the nanocylinders with 100 nanometer diameter. What else we observe? We observe also that the maximum surface intensity is obtained for a LSPR located between the incident excitation, lambda x, and the analyzed Raman wavelength, lambda r, which corresponds to the analyzed Raman band located at uh, 1614 cm uh, minus 1. This observation is very important and strongly suggests that the choice of the excitation wavelength is essential. Imagine that if the excitation was 785 nanometers, for example, the search maximum for the analyzed Raman band will be missed for sure. As you can see, it is really necessary to ensure the right excitation of the LSPR in order to optimize the search effect. And with this conclusion, I outlined the importance of one aspect of the third factor influencing the search results. I think I will stop here with the search basics. Actually, for a first approach, is more than sufficient. And I propose you in the following to see what really happens in practice. So, in the next slide, we will see where and how search technique will be, can be applied. So, the CERFs can have various applications. All of them are especially based, as I said already, on the detection and identification of different chemical and biological molecules, as for example, drugs, biomarkers, contaminants, DNA, and why not cells and microorganisms. From practical point of view, the CERFs measurements can be performed in a, in a basic way. The experimental configuration is called random search configuration. This configuration allows a simple and fast detection of the target molecule. A drop of the molecule solution is absorbed on the search substrate. See the figure on the right part of the slide. But using this configuration, it is possible to get soon to some limitations. One of them is the cell's non-reproducibility. And this is because we cannot control the molecule absorption, more precisely, the molecule orientation. Thus, the cell signals collected can be different. Moreover, it has been shown that the structure of the biological molecules can be destroyed quickly by the simple deposition on the metallic surface. There are solutions to overcome these problems, and one of them is the functionalization. So, what is the functionalization? The functionalization is often a molecule which will serve to better fix and orient 
the target molecule. As we can observe in the figure, the polarization is usually placed between the surf substrate and the target molecule. And with this solution, a new door is open to a new experimental surf configuration. This new surf configuration is called oriented one. The functionalization is used to orient the target molecule in one way, as shown in the figure. This improvement leads to the reproducible surf scene. Another advantage of this configuration is that the molecule is more stable and its structure is better preserved. In many cases, the functionalization can be specific. It will recognize only certain target molecules, so the surf detection can be also specific. However, this configuration can have also some limitations. Firstly, very low functionalization cannot be used because the target molecule will be too far from the nanoparticle and the surf effect will decrease. Secondly, the functionalization is specific for each molecule. For a new target molecule, a new functionalization will be used. And moreover, the measurements made in this configuration are usually time demanding. So, there are advantages and also limitations of both, for both such configurations, random or oriented. But note that the configuration choice will be always made as a function of the user's application. For example, in the sensing application, the preferred configuration will be the oriented one. In these applications, usually the search, the users are developing their own search nanosensor. A search nanosensor will be composed by a search substrate, a functionalization of the receptor, and the target molecule to be announced. Optimizing this configuration, they expect to continuously improve the nanosensor properties, which are the label-free detection, the sensitivity, the specificity, and the reproducibility. Now, let's conclude in few words all things that were exposed today. We spoke about the search effect and its applicability. And we learned that the search technique may offer many advantages, especially in sensing applications. But it is not push-button technique yet. Some improvements are needed. One of them concerns the production of inexpensive and efficient search structure, which is not an easy task. And the other improvements concern the experimental search configuration. And here I'm talking about the control of the chemistry at the surface of the nanoparticle. Very good knowledge of the chemical interaction is required. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.